Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hey guys, Zot here. Elemental Shans are one of the most mobile and confusing casters in the game, having a ton of disruption, insane burst damage, and all while seemingly not casting a single ability. Well, we've got in touch with top European Elemental Shaman and part of AWC Team Diabolos, Jamie, and we've asked him to spill the beans on the top four ways to counter his class of choice. Welcome to Knowing Your Enemy. Elemental Shamans heavily revolve around one singular spell. This spell enables them to do that huge burst you've more than likely seen. But not only that, it's also key to all of their consistent damage. I'm of course talking about Flame Shock. Flame Shock in previous expansions has never really been seen as a must dispel debuff. Well, with BFA, that's all changed. This is due to Flame Shock now having a cooldown of 6 seconds. And with all healers having a dispel cooldown of 8 seconds, this means you can heavily counter elemental shamans by simply looking out for Flame Shock and pressing dispel when you see it applied. Why is this such a must dispel debuff though? Well, there is a few reasons. First of all is that Flame Shock does very good damage. The consistent pressure of Flame Shock ticking on multiple targets is comparable to any other hard hitting dot and will really add up over the course of a game. Secondly is that Flame Shock is integral to Lava Burst. If a target has Flame Shock up, the Elemental Shaman's Lava Burst will always critical strike. And as we know, Elementals also deal extra damage with critical strikes thanks to Elemental Fury. And if all of that wasn't reason enough, Elemental Shamans stack an Azerite trait called Lava Shock. What this does is it increases the damage of their hard hitting ability Earth Shock every single time that Flame Shock deals damage, stacking all the way up to 20. If the Shaman has multiple Flame Shocks out and ticking, he's going to be stacking this up incredibly fast and be able to do consistently hard hitting Earth Shocks. So next time you see an elemental in your game, make sure to pay attention to his flame shock and dispel it as fast as possible, or well tell your healer to. Lightning Lasso is one of the most powerful abilities in the game, a stun that not only locks the target down, but also deals an insane amount of damage whilst doing so. This ability is the bread and butter to most shaman comps, with all of their setups and kill potential focusing around Lasso. Lasso is a channel which can also be used whilst moving, so a thing elemental shamans look to commonly do is to begin the cast and then line of sight to avoid all interrupts. This means it's vital that you pay attention to this ability. We recommend tracking it with an add-on and when it's off cooldown, look to save a cooldown to stop it. Lasso can be stopped with any form of crowd control or interrupt. When facing a shaman, you should also be looking to play with a gladiator's medallion. Relentless is actually bugged with Lasso and it will still deal the same amount of damage despite the shorter stun. Trinketing with your gladiator's medallion instantly stops the channel and removes all of the damage. Get into the habit of watching for this cooldown and using everything in your power to stop it and you'll have a much better chance when up against elemental shamans. Totems have always been the class fantasy and flavour of shamans and even today their totems bring some huge power. Most of their totems don't do too much or aren't worth looking out for, but there are four that you should always look out for and aim to kill instantly, as all totems have very very low health and can mostly be killed with one ability. The most common totem you'll see is Sky Fury, and even to this day, Sky Fury totem is heavily overlooked, with many people not even considering it. Well, Sky Fury gives the Shaman and his team 20% increased healing or damage on critical strikes, and as we know from earlier, Shaman's Lava Burst always critical strikes if used on a target with Flame Shock. So essentially what this is, is a 20% damage increase, not to mention its effect for other classes. For instance, Holy Paladins have insane critical strike chance on their heals, so they're going to be doing 20% more healing. Destruction Warlocks also have 100% critical strike chance on Chaos Bolt, meaning again, it's a 20% damage buff. 
and you can remove all of this simply by killing the totem. Now for casters, you'll more than likely know and hate this totem. Grounding totem makes all of the spells you cast be redirected to the totem instead of your target. Previously, in other expansions, grounding totem would just soak the ability and then die. Now though, grounding totem lasts for 3 seconds and will soak all spells for its entire duration. Meaning, if you don't want to waste your time, you need to be looking for this totem and targeting it down. Whilst melee cleaves have something else to look out for. Whilst not commonly played at higher ratings, counter strike totem can really catch people off guard at lower ratings when they're not looking out for it. Whilst down, counter strike will reflect all of the damage you're dealing to anyone in its range back at you, resulting in absurd amounts of damage if left up, as this totem lasts for 15 seconds. So if you ever see this down, make sure you kill it immediately. And the final totem you should be looking out for is something every shaman will have, and that's cap totem. When placed, cap totem after a 2 second delay will stun all targets in an 8 yard range for 3 seconds, giving you 2 seconds to completely defuse it. So to prevent yourself getting stunned, keep an eye out for cap totem. Elemental shamans are known for their high burst damage. But what is it that does the damage? The biggest burst Elemental is capable of with a single press is Earthshock. Earthshock is an Elemental Shaman's only real way to spend their resource called Maelstrom. The other alternative is Earthquake, which is rarely used. Earthshock requires 60 Maelstrom in order to use. But not only that, Shamans need to combine this with their Azerite trait Lava Shock in order to get those big Earthshocks. So this means it's actually very easy to track. If you see a shaman with 20 stacks of lava shock and the required maelstrom, then they're capable of hitting you extremely hard at any point, so aim to try and not dip low. The other way a shaman is going to be bursting is with their main damage cooldown Stormkeeper. Stormkeeper is actually a short cast which then buffs the next two lightning bolts by 150% as well as causing them to overload, dealing even more damage. This is very easy to look out for, simply watch for the shaman casting the ability. This is also a great ability to kick, as with interrupting a shaman, you should always aim to do it on nature. But if you see a shaman cast this, just know they're going to be able to hit you extremely hard with a lot of burst damage. Stormkeeper even generates a lot of maelstrom, meaning they can combine this with an earth shock afterwards. But that's not the only two things you should be on the lookout for. Elemental Shamans pick up a talent called Primal Elementalist. This buffs the power of their elementals, but most importantly their fire elemental. The Primal Fire Elemental lasts for 30 seconds, and whilst this is up, it will generate them a ton of maelstrom for every flame shock that they have out, whilst also dealing very high damage for a pet. If you let the fire elemental chain cast onto you and don't respect this strong cooldown, the shaman and his pet will be dealing a ton of damage. Alright then guys, that's going to be our top 4 tips in order to counter elemental shamans. Hope this was useful and be sure to let us know what class you want to see next. Thanks for watching.